this. It doesn't... Hi there, folks, and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I got a good one for you here today. As you know, you've been following the channel. You saw me do the rescue of the 1983 Polar Craft. You saw me do the rebuild of the transom. And then you've now recently seen me do the front deck area. What this boat is all about is to, it's, I'm not trying to make it, you know, perfect. That's why it's called the good enough. The boat's name is the good enough. So there again, I've done everything so far with pretty much stuff I've had laying around the house, more or less, or the marina here. Uh, with, you know, except for like fiberglass resin, I had to buy some of that, but there's been in bolts, stainless bolts. You don't just have a plethora of stainless bolts laying around all the time. Some of you might. I'm not going to say you don't. But in continuation of what this boat has been all about, we are going to continue to use stuff I have laying around here. What's this video all about? It's going to be about a jack plate. I've been talking about a jack plate, thinking about a jack plate, planning in my brain a jack plate. I've got the blueprint over here on the left side of my head and the right side of my head keeps looking at it and reviewing it and wondering if I've got it planned out okay in my head. But now it comes time to put the rubber to the road, the meat to the table, the knife to the steak, the... I don't know. It always works in my head every time. Okay, so what I've got laying around here is I've got a whole bunch of of these three eighths thick, I believe it is. Yep, three eighths thick by three inch wide aluminum pieces this long. A whole bunch of them, 16 inches long, every one of them. Uh, this was a, that was kind of loud, I bet. This was from a project that never manifested itself and ended up turning into scrap aluminum. Uh, and the scrap aluminum ended up at the marina and now we're gonna turn it into a jack plate. And my goal here is to minimize the amount of cutting. So we're gonna see if we can use these 3 8 by three by 16 inch long pieces of aluminum, turn them into a jack plate, and I'm gonna try to do my very best not to even cut it with a bandsaw. I'm gonna use it just as is because I think, I think there's a good purpose in mind to, to do it the way I'm going to do it. And we'll see if that pans out or not. Uh, the nice thing is it's already 16 inches wide. Is that a good number? I don't know. It's four inches past one foot. Does that mean anything? I don't know. But that's the way I'm going to use it. Because this seems wide enough. If I hold it up to all my, all my outboards laying around here, it's like, yeah, that's plenty wide enough to, to grab onto a, you know, the, the motor clamp. More than enough room. So let's just leave it wide. So... It's, it might be, you know, you may want your jack plate this wide on the back of your boat. I'm going to be this wide. Why? Why not? You can't give me a good reason as to why a jack plate is a specific width on the back of a boat. You won't find it out there because the whole transom, the whole transom is strong. And quite frankly, if you spread it out a little further, when you go to turn and torque, that, that pressure is distributed out further. You get me? Now that has more leverage on the boat. The motor doesn't have, the outboard doesn't have leverage over that transom. You know, you think and put that transom clamps are this far apart and you clamp it on your boat and you go to turn. Yeah, there might be some torque and twisted, but it's an area this way. You spread that out. Now the outboard has less leverage for, for, um, from a, uh, let's just call it strength standpoint to do damage to your transom. So what I've done is I test welded one piece here and I'm going to show you how I did it and how I'm going to go about prepping it. And folks, if you look at my welds and you go, those don't look professional. Well, yeah, you're right. I'm not a professional welder. I've been welding on and off my whole adult life. Uh, but this, I have a spool gun for my Miller 185 and occasionally I use it. And what I'm welding this together with is 5053 aluminum, 30 thousandths diameter wire. I'm going to show you the process in which I go and turn this flat plate into angle aluminum. Now, some of you might be out there going, why, why don't you just buy yourself some angle aluminum? It's not cheap. And if you want it heavy duty, it's definitely not cheap. 
And if you go to buy some three by three by three eighths, I'll probably look up a price later online. If you were to be, if you're not going to a your regular steel and aluminum warehouse, uh, what what it would possibly cost you? I'm gonna say, for what I'm gonna be using here, there's gonna be a hundred and twenty five dollars worth of aluminum. Let's just say that out loud right now. Uh, I'm I'm guesstimating here. You guys, if you guys know the price of aluminum, I'm gonna be using. Let's see here. Let me just calculate in my head. One, two, three, four, five, at least six pieces, 16 inches long. Um, and uh, I'm going to be using less than, uh, well, I'll let you know. I'll probably be using less than $18 worth of aluminum wire. And uh, I think I'll have something that I've created myself that I'm going to enjoy. And basically, because the, the craftiness side of me says, build it. Build it and they will float your boat. Okay, we've got one piece done here. I'm gonna get you in close and kind of show you how I set up and, and built it. I won't bore you with welding all of them together. We'll come back to the end when I'm ready to start, you know, doing jack plate things with it. All right, be back in a little bit. Okay, there's several, kind, several types of ways you could weld stuff together if you so desired. You could put those two plates together like this and you could put a fillet weld here and a weld you could V this out here and fillet weld that in and grind it off smooth that's a choice there's another way that I'm gonna do it that you guys may or may not agree with well there's a there's a there's a here's let me show you one other way uh, I don't even know if this would work very well to be honest with you let's just see here if we did a uh, how would I do that? Nope, I don't like that at all. Can't even think of it in my head. My head won't work. Anyway, what I'm doing with this is I'm welding it together like this. So then I can fill this all in with weld and get basically 100% penetration through there. And then I'm also putting a fillet weld inside here. So the amount of weld I have total is basically equivalent to the same thickness of the plate. Should give it plenty of strength. That's, that's where I'm going with it. You guys can message me below on how you would do it. But that's how I'm going to do it. So let's go, let's go look at how I've got it set up. Now what I've done here is I've taken a piece of, I've got some of this, these are like angle braces, steel angle braces. That you, you know, it came with a, it came with something I bought, but I never used them. But they work good for just clamping onto with my C clamps. There again, I've done what I said I was going to do there. You can see how I've done that. And then, the cool part, is I can just lay it down like this. Why is it rocking so much? Must not have things equal. Anyway, the cool part is. I can preheat this and then I can weld it up. And when I'm done welding this side, I take my clamps off. I roll it over on a set of V blocks I have here and it holds it this way. And I can just put a nice little fillet bead on the inside. Now, if you're gonna be doing any aluminum welding, I highly advise you get, I, you know, I'm gonna move this clamp. That's the problem. There we go. Uh, you gotta preheat. You gotta preheat, and you gotta preheat hot enough. You can you can hot. Now you, you can you can try to preheat with your regular propane torch. What happened? Now, what do you, reason you want to preheat? Watch this. You're gonna see it. See that moisture? See that water? Now my shop is 60 degrees. And if you just started welding on this with that moisture in there, you're not gonna get a good penetrating weld. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of water there. And with this 3 8 plate, it's gonna take a while. Now what I'm getting ready to show you here is what I learned a long time ago. 
I've got an oxyacetylene torch here and I have you want to soot, soot it up. So if you just turn the acetylene on. Oh my God, that's hot. And you take and Nothing but acetylene here. It's all about the acetylene. So you see I'm sitting this up like this, turning it black. Then I'm gonna hit it with the oxygen. And now you're gonna sit there and heat this up. So you burn off all that soot. And as you can see, that soot doesn't burn off very fast. We'll just keep warming the whole thing up here. Now, as you can see, we've got all the soot burnt off of it. That means that it's properly preheated, ready for me to weld. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my welder on and get busy welding. We're sitting here with four beautifully, expertly crafted pieces of 3x3x3 three by three by three angle iron. Nope, angle aluminum. Nope, angle aluminum. However you want to pronounce it. But anyway, I've got them all sanded, deburred, and all that fun stuff. Now, I didn't grind to get rid of weld and hide my weld. I ground to make sure these angles here were flat. So then when I lay another piece there, it's not going to be bumping up on any weld. And all I did on the inside is wire brush the weld on the inside. Leave your weld. Keep the strength. All that fun stuff. So now, I'll bring you in a little closer here and show you kind of my thought process and see if this makes sense to you. Now, the ultimate goal with this particular aluminum angle is to do something a lot like this. We can lay it like this if we want. But see, this will be inside each other like that. I'm going to do two of these. And as you can see, when we bolt these two together, this is going to go fasten to the boat. This is going to have a plate that fastens, you know, where the outboard hangs. And I think that's going to turn out really well. I'm excited about how this is turning out so far. Now... The other part I gotta work on is getting getting it so that I have at least five inches of change from short shaft to long shaft outboards so I can really make this function as it should. And so I wanna be able to have this be your normal short shaft and then we come up five inches and then we have our long shaft, right? And that the bolt holes will align and do what I want it to do. So we're going to go ahead and lay that out. I think I'm going to go ahead and lay it out. 
on both pieces, drill it, and actually bolt it together, and then continue on with my fabrication. Well, I didn't want to bore you with all the welding that I did, but we have it all welded together now. As you can see, this is now connected together. These pieces here I marked so I can put them back in the right spot. But these here will line up inside here. I can bolt two bolts through here, two bolts through this side. Let's see here like this. Just like that. So when I put my bolts through here like this, and like this, you know, everything can be like tightened up, you know, hold itself together. This particular part right here is the boat side, right? Then I can also pull the bolts out, raise this part up five inches put the bolts back in, two bolts back in, and now I got my five inch jack plate in place here for the larger, or the long shaft outboards, right? Now what I've got to do next, I'm gonna pull these back off. I'm gonna put a piece of wood, you know, to, to, to thicken it up, if you will. So inside here where the, mo the outboard would normally hang, I want to put a piece of wood here on the inside. You know, this inside, you know, to simulate your boat. So I got to get some thickness here. Cool part is I've still got some of that plywood that I did the transom with. I'm just going to use that. I'm going to cut it and make it all work inside here and then I'll cover it, coat it in resin. And then I'll have a recreated basically transom all over again, only it's adjustable now. And I put the bolt holes in the boat with the track with this with this plate here. And this this piece is gonna take all the abuse of clamping and unclamping boards. I can replace this piece of wood anytime I want. I may make two of them at the same time, so I can go ahead and let's just say replace on it. Sorry about that, battery died. Not sure, not sure exactly where I left off here, but we can go ahead and make our plywood so it's replaceable. We'll get that clamped on here. It's gonna, then we'll be ready to back the boat back in here, poke some holes in the back of the boat, get this mounted in place, and then we can call the transom complete. Did you ever have a situation where you thought you were done welding and then you decided to do some more welding until you're, you know, basically burning through a pound and a half of welding wire? to put this together and uh, and you ask yourself, was it worth it? Absolutely. Well, so far what we've got here, so this is what you'd see from the back of the boat. And here's the angle pieces here. We've got them welded in here. We've got this welded on here around each piece, 360 degrees on all three pieces. Going nowhere. Up here is where the outboard will hang on this part here and with the addition hold it this is a sample this will be a sample of what i put together but as you folks saw in a previous video how i rebuilt the transom i used the same three quarter inch plywood this is three quarter inch five ply plywood that i have 
that I will seal up. I have four of them over here, built up, doubled together, screwed and glued, just like the transom. You know, it's, it's redundantly strong to no end. This will actually fit on the inside like this. This will mount inside here. The outboard part, the out, you know, back of the boat will mount on the backside. And here will be the area where my clamps can go. And this is, believe it or not, big enough to handle, you know, a four and a half horse all the way up to my 50 horse. It has enough space here to handle all that. And, you know, these things only come down about three inches to the center of the clamp from the top edge. Now, this will be mounted up with this upper edge just up, just a touch. Maybe, you know, it's right here even with the top of this. So far, I'm thrilled with how it turned out. I will be putting some holes through here. Maybe, well, let's just call it eight holes. And then I'll be putting some nice flush mounted wood screws into the wood to hold it on. And then I'll back each screw out, put some uh, silicone in there and screw it in there so you know it's sealed up. We're trying to keep moisture out of the wood, right? And you guys might be going, why'd you use wood? You could have used anything but wood. But you know, I had it in this wood, I'm, I'm putting a clear coat on it. It's gonna be, you look at the back of the boat, you'll see the wood transom back there. Then you're gonna see the jack plate, which is, you know, Let's just call it overkill times two. And you're going to see the transom, and you have this nice little piece of wood there, and you go, oh, that guy's got a little bit of class. We all know that's not the case. He just got a case of the, I don't, I just can't do it a little bit. Now, with that being said, I had my other angle pieces bolted on here, and you're probably asking yourself, What's that piece laying there, Michael? Well, I'm gonna show you. This piece here will actually, once I stretch it back out a little bit, I gotta flex it a little bit, will bolt on to here, which has my one, two, three holes that are five inches apart. Cool part is when it's down, I can put it, put it in these two holes. And when it's up, I can put it in these two holes. Or I got the option to put it in three holes when it's down. You know, it's just my choice. But the cool part is when this thing's bolted in place up in position, the jack plate will be up five inches from being down, upside down. Oh, wait a minute, got it backwards. There we go. It'll be like that when it's, oh, stop it. When it's all the way down, it'll look something like this. I don't know if you can see this, I'm hoping you can. And then when you go up five inches, boom, there's your jack plate up five inches for a long shaft. Now what I did here, so in order to dodge, you guys saw all the bolts on the back of the boat. There's 38 of them, I believe. Heads of screws sticking out. I thought, maybe, just maybe I can... <coughs> maybe I could utilize some of those bolt holes so I wouldn't have to put more bolt holes. And as I was holding things up in place, I'm thinking, none of these are going to work. So, I decided to opt to put a 3 8 plate across here like this. I angled, cut it. I don't know why. I could have made it flat, but... You know, just, you can't see it once it's on the boat, but it does dodge two bolts that are right here on the edge is the reason it's angle cut. But this will go onto the back of the boat, bam. I'm gonna put three, three eighths holes through it. I've got them laid out. And then I'll put another aluminum spacer that will not be welded on here, across here. And then I'll put another spacer down at the bottom here. And there again, I've got that cut. Yep, right here it is. Thank you, Mr. Bandsaw. Be right back. Mr. Belt Sander over there fights winter every time it, every chance it gets, you know, because it's a deburring tool. <laughs> yeah, there's your dad joke for the day. So this plate's gonna go right here, somewhere in this vicinity here. We're gonna put one hole through here and here. That's gonna go through, clear through this, the plate and the boat. And then I'm gonna have a couple more of these 
just square pucks down here. And that'll support the very, support this on the very bottom of the of the transom. The other thing I'm going to do, overkill times three here, is I'm going to put a plate on the inside of the boat. Yep, on the inside. So between a plate like this and a plate like this, the transom will be sandwiched, and I can tighten up these two bolts, and it's going to have all this. You know, it's not going to crush things because it's going to be the 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 weight is going to be so distrib distrib distribute spread across all this area and uh that's going to just be wow powerful so i'm pretty confident my six bolts is going to easily hold this to the transom the two bolts four bolts that are going in here which are going to be three eighths will fasten these two pieces together you know the th people might be going you see a lot of these are probably bigger more bigger bolts but you know what the sheer strength on a grade five uh 3 8 shoulder bolt is not not shoulder bolt just regular bolt hex head bolt uh is it's it's a lot all right i am uh yep yeah, people are going to see this every now and then and it's just they're going to go that you really expect that not to break i expect it not to break so next thing next order of business is going to be drilling me some 3 did I say three eighths? Yeah, three eighths holes through here. Now, have you guys ever been to the hardware store, bought what you thought was the bolts to do the job, and you get home and well, let's just call it five days later, I'm looking around for this bag of hardware that I cannot locate. It is gone. It's not. It's not gone. It's just temporarily misplaced. But you know when I find it. It's going to be in the last place I look. Because once you find it, why would you keep looking? And it's, uh, I set it somewhere going, that's a good spot. I hope I remember it. Anyway, it's time to drill some 3 8 holes through here. The nice thing is once I get the 3 8 holes here, I can clamp this to the back of the boat. And I'll, I'll bring you guys along for that too. I'll clamp this to the back of the boat. Then I'll be able to drill this hole perpendicular to this plate through the back of the boat, be able to clamp another plate like this onto it. Actually, what I'm gonna do is clamp this on the boat, put that on it, and then I'll transfer punch it into this piece. That way I won't miss the hole and it'll all come out, you know, it'll come out straight. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, Michael, why'd you use 3 8 Why didn't you go with a bigger bolt? Well, for one, 3 8 has a plenty of strength. And if something was to go horribly wrong in the future, I can jump up to a 7 16 bolt. And if they go bad again, I can go up to a half-inch bolt. You know, and I can go up to 5 8 3 quarter. You know, I can, you can go... I can go to ridiculous, is what I'm saying. Now, I worked with this one old guy, and uh, he has since passed on, but one of the things he used to say is, if you can't make it right, make it adjustable. It wasn't wrong there. Some of you might also be asking yourself, how come you didn't put slots in here? So you just slide this thing up and down, just back the bolts off and slide it up and down. Well, still could. But I'm not, I'm not in the business here of what is on, what is that right there? Oh, it's a case. <laughs> um, I'm not in the business of trying to trim this motor up so I get maximum performance out of it. 
that I can get it just where I can, you know, just enough water, just enough top speed. You know, I'm not after that. I'm after good, solid, effective uh, trialing of a, of a, you know, freshly overhauled, rebuilt, tuned up motor outboard to see if it's working. So, all right, next steps are going to be clamp this bad boy to the transom, drill some 3 8 holes all the way through. You know, we got to commit here. And then we're going to cut some more of this plate stock. We got this one here. We got some pucks down here. And then we got the inside pieces. This will be one, two, three inside pieces. Why? Because I didn't make this wide enough. Yep. It's going to be... We're adding pounds to the back of the boat. That's what was going to happen here. But that's okay. These are pounds that a, that a 16 foot extra wide John boat can more than handle. But so far, you know, I'm now this is the nerve wracking part, right? Now I'm going to put more holes in the transom. I mean, pretty soon Wisconsin's going to be calling me wanting their boat back because it's the transom looks like Swiss cheese, but that's okay. We got some holes, but we're also adding quite a bit of strength with those holes. I mean, my goodness, you saw how I built the transom. That plywood is so strong. It's, it's unbelievable. Oh, hi guys. Ugh. Shut that thing off. Let's, let's talk. Let's talk progress here. Let's talk uh, what we got, got, got done here. I'm pretty happy with everything that you're going to see here. As you can see, we went from me doing so a little bit of welding right to the, hey, it's on the boat. I wasn't going to waste all your time with all the little intricate details of putting it on the boat. Not a big deal. It's drilling holes in a transom and uh, bolting her up, right? That's what we did. Nothing fancy there. But I will bring you in close here in just a minute and show you some more details of what it did. And, uh, you know, just to show you that, you know, we got a little 9-9 hanging on here. And I'm going to put my foot down here on the on the cavitation plate and I'm gonna put it up as you can see I can move this whole boat bounce it up and down on this trailer and none of this none of this is given and I'm guarantee I'm not putting that much I, I can put all my body weight on here if I want but the front end of the boat's gonna come up this is solid this is the very if you look up solid in the dictionary you're gonna find the word s-o-l-i-d and no, you're not going to find my picture or this next to it. I don't know where I was going with that. But now that this is mounted, I now officially have, <laughs> this is a bit of ridiculousness. I officially have 44 holes in the back of this boat. That's nuts. Uh, but, you know, they're all sealed up. In the back of this boat, I have enough silicone sealing up all the holes and all the bolts and everything to make a couple of uh baywatch life's you know lifesaver uh people out of it yep that's what i got now let's bring you in here just a little bit closer and show you some of the stuff going on so as you can see right here just right there there's a three inch by three eighths thick aluminum plate with two holes in it now what's that for? Well, I'll tell you what that's for. That's the two holes that I put through here to hold the top part of the jack plate on. And there's two more. You can see the heads of the green or the bottom of the threads of the green bolts here. That's two more holes I put in. And then at the very bottom underneath the knee braces is two more holes. That's what's holding this entire jack plate on. Now, did I polish this up after I smoked it up before welding? Nope. Because it's got to look, you know, let's keep it a little bit rustic looking. We don't want to look like this is brand new. And, you know, I don't, I don't want it to catch people's attention because it's, uh, it's something I built. What we have here, as you can see, is I have it in the long shaft mode, which makes this thing stick up about five inches above here. Now, I'm about three inches above the transom. Now, I've had trouble finding what is called a rule of thumb. Now, when I say or mention or comment about the word rule of thumb, I'm not sure what I'm talking about because I've had trouble finding a definitive thing that says X, Y, and Z equals P, Q, R, and L. 
So you got your back transom of your boat. Like so, right? This is, this is the boat. Now, typically, I'm not sure, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I think most boats, let's just draw it up here, 15 degree angle on the back of the transom, right? So keeping that in mind, 15 degree is not 45 degrees. And I say that for this reason only. I saw people say the comment that every, on your jack plate, every three inches you go back, that your jack plate could be up above your transom three inches, so to speak. Now most transoms, let's just go with this dimension right here. We got 15 to 16 inch of Roonies, right? Uh, that's for your short shaft. You go 20 to 21 inches is what I've seen typical for long shaft. Basically, there's five inches difference. That's what I designed this jack plate all about. But I didn't, you know, some people were saying that, oh, if you go back three inches, you can go up three inches. Well, that doesn't compute out. I mean, coming back, it, it's not a 45 degree angle. You know, over and up doesn't equal the same amount. But for mine, and I'm gonna tell you what I did here, I went up three inches. So my jack plate here is up three inches. This is an exaggeration, but from here to here, we got three inches. From here to here, I got about four inches, roughly four, four and a half. Let's just call four to four and a half. I'll call it four for now. And right now, what you wanna do, you got your boat cavitation plate, boat, outboard motor cavitation plate. Let's just say we're gonna draw a really crude outboard here. Here's your shaft coming down. And here's your cavitation plate on the bottom of your outboard. You know, it comes down this thin plate and then it comes down here to your gearbox. And then you got your little proppy do here that does proppy do things. Well, There again, I'm no expert, so I'm just speaking from what, I, what I've experienced or what I've been doing and what I know is the bottom of the boat here, prime optimal, you know, whatevers. People are saying, people are saying, I'm not saying that, you know, your cavitation plate should be, you know, somewhere near the bottom of your boat for optimal performance. Well, depending on your boat and how it sits in the water, you know, there's a lot of variables that come into play here. On this particular one, I'm getting ready to show you, I did this whole number right, and I went up three inches over, and what I'm gonna show you is a long shaft version hanging on my jack plate. And I've got it so that this cavitation plate is literally gonna be about an inch and a half below the bottom of the boat, which is fine. But like I said, there is, if you can find it, point me to it in the comments below. What is, you know, this? What, what should this all be? Now you'll see, you'll see jack plates that have slots. You know why they have slots? Because if you can't make it right, make it adjustable. And they got it bolts in here so you can slide it up and down. And you can adjust your, you know, where your outboard's running. There's some that are live, there's some electric, there's some that are fixed. Mine is not only fixed, it's hyper fixed. I currently have three, bolt holes on mine so that I can raise this up like you're gonna see here in a second where it's locked in here, the outboard's mounted up here and I've got what I'm gonna call perfect placement down here. And then if you move from this set of holes down to here, which brings this whole jack plate down five inches, then I've got it set up for short shaft. And it may be just a touch deeper in the water than it needs to be when the outboard's hanging on it, but that's fine. Cause a touch deeper is way better than a touch shallow cause you don't wanna have any cavitation. Well. There, story time is over. Let's go look at the rest of what we've got going on on the back of the boat. Always leave your dry erase board clean, you know, because you might walk over here and do some more. Let's look at the rest of it here. Like I said, over there on the drawing board, what I've got here is a two by leftover from when I did the uh, casting deck. I've slid that between the boat and the trailer here. So this represents, this top edge represents the bottom of the boat. Right here, this cavitation plate that's hard to see 
is right behind here. And it's actually almost dang near flush with the bottom of this, this, uh, this is inch and a half thick. So that tells me my cavitation plate just sitting, well, like for, if I'm running full on plane, the water's coming off the back of this, right across the top of here. I'm an inch and a half of water above my cavitation plate. That should work pretty good. That should uh, plane out and do all kinds of uh, really good stuff for me. Now let's take a look at my, a little closer look at the assembled jack plate. Now, as shown in that exquisite drawing on the dry erase board, I showed you the three holes. Right now I have two three eighths thick, two three eighths inch uh, bolts in here with washers and lock washers and all that fun stuff. I can take these two out. As you can see, there's another hole up here. I can move this all the way down and put these same two bolts back in and have it fi exactly five inches lower, which would actually work for a short shaft outboard at that point. This thing is mounted so solid, so rigidly, it's, it's undeniably unbreakable, I would feel. I did that for a purpose. <coughs> I did that for a reason because who knows what outboard I'll be hanging on here and how I want it to uh, perform and how I want it to work. It, it's, you know, it's, let's just say it's more universal than it needs to be. Now, some of the other features we'll talk about here is this wooden block I put here. Now, this is some of the same material here, exact same material, plywood, that I used for the transom I used here. I've got it screwed and glued and covered in resin. And right here it says good enough, because that's what it is. It's going to be good enough. I did that for... You know, see, a lot of people use different blocks. I could have used a resin block of some sort, uh, plastic. That may be changed out someday. I've got five brass screws screwed into the back, or four, into the back through this aluminum to hold this in place. And then I got, you know, my clamping surface here. I actually made three extra ones just like this, uh, just in case this gets wore out after changing outboards in and out uh, several times. I can just screw another one on here and I'm, I'm back to fresh again. And then the other, some of the other reason I put this aluminum plate here and I got the bolts coming through here, this aluminum plate is going to distribute the pressure all through here. It's not going to be just two bolts and two washers. This works like a giant washer now, spreading that stress out over the whole transom, which adds to its rigidity, obviously, and it's going to, you know, into its longevity as well. So what else can we tell you about this thing? Uh, there again, homegrown. And uh, nothing fancy, but it's going to work really well. So what I've got here is something I'm pretty happy with. I'm happy how it turned out. It's, there again, very rigid setup. Uh, it's going to last me a long time, I feel. Um, there again, we'll know this spring when the water thaws out and I can get a boat out on the water. We're going to know exactly how this thing performs and how well it performs. And if it does everything that, you know, I've intended for it to do by design. This is, uh, wow. I'm, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. What can I tell you? I haven't had a boat this big that carries an outboard like this to do the things I can do with it. Yeah, the banana, it can handle a pretty hefty outboard. Uh, of course, it's a 14 foot fiberglass tri-hull and you know, it's all, I'm going to put a 50 horse on that. But to be able to have a boat that's, let's just say light enough that I can do performance things with a 9.9 or 15 horse all the way up to say 50 horse, and compare some differences. That's what's gonna. I'm excited about doing. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna probably start tracking this summer the different outboards that I'm working on. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's just take a little swig of something here. Ooh, that's peachy. Uh, but we're gonna. I want to be able to take this boat outfitted with all the gear that I'm gonna have in it. And keep in mind, this is just the official RMD Creations test boat. And that's what it's going to be for, for, the, for, for the foreseeable future. I'm not turning this into a fishing boat or anything like that. This is to go to the lake, drop it in, crank the outboard up. It's going to have tanks, battery, whatever it needs to run, whatever outboard is in here. I'm not even going to carry, I'm not even planning on having lights on here because this is a, when we go out and do test boats, it's a first in the morning thing and, you know, we're off the water by noon because that's usually where the lake I go to starts to get a little more recreational like and a lot more busy. So we're going to, you know, we stay off the lake at that point in time, but we can, I can actually take two, you know, multiple outboards out and just swap them out, 
throw the next one on, go test that one, video capture all the things. Anyway, I will be able to do apples to apples comparison on, you know, how, do, how well does a 9.9 push a 16 foot extra wide John boat? And then how fast did it go? What pitch prop do I have on it? And all that kind of fun stuff. So it's gonna be exciting to kind of, let's collect some data. And then we can see how a 15 horse, a 20 horse, 25 horse, with a prop on it, you know, different props and give you the outputs. And that way you guys will be able to watch and go, Ooh, I've got a 15 horse, but I saw him have this boat and how much it weighed. Cause I'll get a weight on this boat. The idea behind this one, when I get the right trailer under it is I'm going to peel this boat off, go weigh the trailer, put the boat on it, weigh the, weigh the boat. Then I'll know exactly what it weighs, <coughs> which will be vital to collecting the data that and actually truly happen having apples to apples comparison so i'm excited about that anyway lots of good stuff we can we can share spreadsheets and graphs and outcomes i don't know we're just going to have a good time with it all right jack plate complete this took way way longer than i expected it to i started this a weekend ago on a saturday thinking I was going to get this done on a Saturday and start working on an outboard on Sunday and just crank out a couple of videos. Well, as things go, things don't always go as smooth and as fast as you want. The welding process behind this was way more time consuming than I expected it to be because of all the preheating, welding, cleaning up, preheat, weld, clean up, and all that stuff. It takes some time. I probably could have, you know, you could have made this a lot faster with a couple of pieces of angle aluminum buying that and putting that together and bolt putting a lot more bolts in it but it would have been done a lot quicker uh if i was to do it again would i do it this way eh, probably not could i use some of the plate that i have in the other way absolutely um because if i just if i didn't weld the angles and i just bolted i got plenty of room here to bolt plates together nice thing about a welding Welding welding's not going to rattle loose. Proper use of lock washers or nylock nuts and stuff like that would also prevent things from rattling loose as well. But I'm, I'm stoked about how this turned out. All that's left to do now is take this back off of here, pull the cover back over it, take it back outside for the rest of the, you know, cold season here, and get busy getting some outboards ready to go on this thing. So hot and heavy, as soon as the ice is out of the water, I can start dropping uh, a lot of outboards in the water, testing them out and getting some more drone footage and just having a good time doing what I like to do most and which is playing around with these boats and outboards and just stuff like that. Uh, we're going to get you a whole lot more drone footage. We have a lot of plans this summer to get out on the Mississippi River and check out the north part of the Mississippi River. We went all the way down to the southern tip of Iowa on the Mississippi River. And then we're gonna go about midway all the way to the north part over the course of the summer with uh, several plans with several boats covering a lot of miles. And uh, it's gonna be a good time. Well, I hope you guys learned something here, what to do, what not to do maybe. Uh, maybe the direction you wanna go with your actual uh, jack plate. Now, a jack plate isn't always necessary, right? Let's be honest with each other. You don't need an adjustable jack plate. Uh, the, advent, the advantage of an adjustable one is like for what I'm doing, I can go long shaft, short shaft, and everywhere in between without doing a whole lot of major modifications to the boat. All the on and off of the outboards are gonna abuse this and not the transom itself uh, by clamping multiple different things onto it. The other advantage is you can, the adjustable ones are perfect for, if you're gonna put a motor on, or an outboard on and you want to get that optimal performance and get that that cavitation plate where it wants so you can go as you know you can go through as shallow as water as you want go for it do it it's not always necessary if you just got a just a regular fishing boat you know and you want to there again a jack plate might gain you one or two or three more miles an hour because of the optimizing where it's at in the water there's always those different things you can do now the other thing about this one here now i can actually adjust the trim because on the long shaft here, I can reach back here and I'm not, I'm not reaching down below the boat while I'm in the water. Now I would be, uh, if I'm down on a short shaft, but the short shaft is still going to ride me about three inches above where the normal short shaft would run. So there again, accessibility to stuff back here, it, it's improved, right? 
But, okay. I got nothing else to talk about on this. I'm done. I'm happy. This goes outside. We still got to test this boat to see if it leaks sometime. So one of the trips out there might be just a, it might be a short lived one if we drop it in the water and all of a sudden water's rushing in. It's like, oh, let's, let's not motor around too long because we don't want to sink. The other thing I need to do with this particular test boat, and as I do with all my boats, I need two means of propulsion. And one of those is not a paddle. They're gonna both be powered propulsion. Now I do have room on the back of this boat if I wanted to, I could easily clamp a trolling motor back here or bolt on a trolling motor jack plate here. So I could just have a trolling motor that I drop in and away we go uh, as a means of pushing this thing back to the dock in case, you know, some of my handiwork doesn't pan out. But the last thing I wanna use is a paddle on any boat. All right. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Stay tuned. I've got some really cool stuff coming up here in the next few months. Uh, we've got a lot of new product we're going to bring on board here. We're going to do a lot of, I've learned so much already. Uh, and we're going to learn so much more together. And I want to educate yourselves while I'm educating myself. All right. There again. This is Michael. Enough said. See you on the next video which I plan on having the 50 horse carburetor work done in the next video. I'm gonna show you all that. And then hopefully we'll fire that 50 horse up and see how it uh, runs. And then we're gonna get busy painting on it. And then we're gonna mount it on the back of the old uh, banana. And we're gonna make that thing absolutely fly. All right, thank you and good night. Okay, now let's get this out of here. So I got some room to, to work and uh, you know, do some more fun stuff. Can I get this out? Oh, that's that's stuck in there good. Where's my pry bar? Here we go. Lift with your back. There we go.